uh, uh, removing the impurities and the filth. And the other part is uh, lifting the state of hadith, whether it is major impurity or uh, uh, minor impurity. So going back, if you answer the call of nature, it is a must for you to clean your private parts, whether by washing it, sprinkling it with water, or with a, by wiping uh, the private parts with using something that is not, uh, 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 not uh, sm with a smooth surface. So, that can we use, for example, glass? It, we cannot use glass because nothing sticks to it. So, it, has, it doesn't do any, any good for us. It has to have a hard and rough surface so that it would clean such as stones, toilet paper, clothing, wood, whatever. So this hadith tells us that it is a must. And why is it a must? Because if you don't do this, then your underwear, your body, would still be filthy and impure. And then this means that subsequently your prayer is not accepted. Uh, the following hadith. Narrated by al mughira bin Shaba, may Allah be pleased with him. Allah's Messenger وسلم, told me, Take the leather water container. He then went forward till he disappeared from me and then relieved himself. Again, this hadith follows the same sequence of the manners for answering the call of nature. Al Mughira ibn Shaba was one of the companions, and the Prophet وسلم, requested that he brings him a water container a leather water container. So he did so, and he knew that the Prophet ﷺ wanted to answer the call of nature. Remember that they did not have bathrooms or toilets. They had to go as far as possible from the, 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 the people. And this is exactly what the Prophet ﷺ did. He went as far as possible. He disappeared. Mughira could not see him. Why? Because these this is one of the manners of answering the call of nature. That you do not do that in the presence of people. So that they would not find any bad smell and they would not hear any noise coming out of you, any sound coming out of you. And it shows you how polite the Prophet ﷺ was and how shy he was from showing these things to others. And, and this is how we should be. And maybe the word shy is not the proper uh, term to use because shyness is uh, usually associated with weakness. More likely, it, it, it's polite. You know, al-haya is something that prevents you from doing things that are wrong or mis discredit you. And the Prophet ﷺ definitely was among the best in such uh, uh, um, uh, good behavior and manner. And that is why he used to go away, far away, until he disappeared. Now, if you compare this to how the people are uh, answering the call of nature nowadays, you'd find strange things happening. For example, if you go to a public toilet, there are these, uh, I don't know what they call them, uh, call them stools or whatever, <clears throat> where they urinate in, while standing up and everybody is doing it and they're looking at each other, uh, each other and saying, well, hi, how are you doing? Oh, that's, not, that's nice. This is awful. You know, what, what are they doing to do this? He's a man and I'm a man. So what, what, what's wrong in that? This is unacceptable at all. One should preserve and keep his awra. And what is the meaning of awra? There isn't any uh, English word that describes or translates to awra, but it is the part of your body that no one is allowed to see except your wife. And for women, it's the same thing. It's the part of the body that no one is supposed to see except her relatives. Not only the husband, but also her uh, uh, blood relatives, such as the brothers and so on. And the, 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 the issue of awra is a big one. And, and this is not definitely the time to go uh, into it. Uh, nevertheless, we have a short break, so stay tuned. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah and welcome back. 
before the break we were talking about awrah and we said that awrah is the part of the body that is not supposed to be seen except by your wife and the part of the body of the woman that is not supposed to be seen except by her br bl uh, blood relatives such as aunt aunt okay well th she's a female I'm talking about males brothers, brothers fathers uh, uh, sons and so on <coughs> uncles and so on unfortunately this <coughs> has changed a lot in, in uh, nowadays if you go to the beaches if you go to uh, 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 the clubs you would find that nudity is prevailing in these places Islam tells us you should preserve your awra you should contain it you should not share it with others it's not something that you uh, uh, show off with <clears throat> remember that Adam and Eve descended from heavens from Jannah when their awra was exposed because of eating from the uh, uh, forbidden fruit and this is something that's common between those primitive people in the jungles of Africa and those primitive people in the West and East they all share nudity so if you go to the jungles of Africa you see them nude but they're primitive yet if you go to nightclubs if you go to strip bars don't go to that and if you go to uh, places in the West you find them also nude if you watch their fashion shows and they try to show as much flesh as possible and it tells you that the only one prevailing and the only one controlling this issue is shaitan Satan Iblis he is he is the one controlling them and trying to uh, uh, get them off the right and correct path Muslims are completely opposite to this they are discreet they are modest and honest and they try to preserve themselves and to keep their awra and not to show it to every, everybody or to anyone else and that is why you have a very high rate of hom homosexuality in the West and East you have a very high rate of homosexuality because they show their flesh and accordingly their sexual desire transforms from here to there and it, 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 it reaches stages that cannot be controlled Islam does not allow this to happen unfortunately we see this also in sports clubs in shower rooms it's, it's very normal in, in, in a lot of countries to find men showering together naked nude completely and this is completely out of the question it's against Islam and those who do this are considered to be weak Muslims and are considered to be not believers of Allah and the day of judgment women also are not allowed to expose themselves in front of other women so women going to swimming pools or going to the beaches wearing bikinis or swimming suits just because there are only women around her this is not allowed in Islam she should cover herself she wants to swim in a swimming pool in a club or whatever she's allowed to do this she's allowed to do whatever she wants providing no males are watching providing that she's not exposing any of her aura I, I think that this gives us a, a, a glimpse of how a Muslim should behave and how Islam wants us to keep our integrity and modesty preserved at all times uh, the following hadith narrated by Abu Hurairah radiallahu an Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa said safeguard yourselves from the two matters that can cause cursing that befalls the one who relieves himself on the people's pathways and under their places of shade reported by Muslim again this is one of the manners that one should follow when urinating or defecating when you're answering the call of nature do not do this in anywhere do it in specific places places that are far away from the passage way of people 
and that are far away from